Hi guys, it's Steffi from the Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another Books Beside My Bed video. I'm going to apologise for a couple of things. I know I've started a lot of these videos recently with I'm apologising for something, but just so you are aware, I'm filming this video with quite a bad cold. In fact, I've just lost the hearing in one of my ears, which I hadn't realised until I started talking. And essentially, I'm just feeling rather flat. Besides that, I've had a reasonably good reading week, although pretty much everything in my personal life has gone to crap this week. It started out really great. We had a public holiday, so I was able to get a bit of reading done at the start of the week. And then my mother was admitted to hospital unexpectedly, and she was in there until Wednesday night. And then my dad went in on Thursday for surgery, which was planned. I had to take Friday off and help care for both of them because they were both home. And I've been sick, so it's really just been one very strange week. As such, this is probably going to be the only video I put up until next Sunday when I have my next Plan With Me video, just because I'm exhausted and I think I just need to take care of myself this week, get better, and hopefully be ready next weekend to film some videos. I've got so many ideas and so many things I want to film, but I just at the moment don't have the energy to do it, and I don't think that's fair. So this is my reading week from the 10th to the 16th of June. I read six books this week, one of which was a picture book, one of which was a middle grade book, so please don't freak out. I read a total of 2014 pages, and my yearly reading total is up to 105 books. Last week I was talking about how my next book would be my 100th read, and how I would possibly pick something that I was really excited to read, and it was I picked something to reread and I reread Airy 7 by Matthew Riley. This was originally published in 2001 by Pan Macmillan and I gave it five out of five stars. It is the second book in the Scarecrow series so the first book being Ice Station which I love. I still love Ice Station. I, it was the very first Matthew Riley book I ever read so it will always have a very very special place in my heart but upon reread I actually think Airy 7 is my favorite just because of the setting and everything that happened and the develop the, the minor development of characters and relationships because Matthew Riley is not known for his character development but there were minor developments which was quite nice. So following the events of Ice Station, Scarecrow is reassigned to Marine One, so the Marine Corps helicopter that services the President of the United States and at the beginning of this book they are en route to Area 7. The new president is inspecting these sort of scientific posts out in the desert. Once they get to Area 7 things go quickly to hell as usual and Scarecrow and his crew are forced to defend the president's life, unravel the mystery behind Area 7 and there's a whole lot of things going on in this book. So there is scientific experimentation, there is some moral and ethical things that are quite interesting to delve into and I can't really talk about them without spoiling them and I know this book is quite old now but if you haven't read it I don't really want to spoil it for you. There are lots of different aircraft mentioned in this, there are lots of really brutal fights, there are prisoners, there is a very brief journey into space and I love this to pieces. Matthew Riley for me is one of those authors that is just escapist and fun and ridiculous and I love it to bits. So yes, highly recommend the Scarecrow series. Then I read the next book in the CBCA 2018 Younger Readers shortlist and that is The Shop at Hooper's Bend by Emily Rodder. And Emily Rodder is a very famous children's author here in Australia. This book was released in 2017 by Angus and Robertson which is an imprint of HarperCollins. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is a beautiful little book about Quill who is a young girl whose parents passed away when she was quite young. She lives with her aunt and she's sort of at a loss. She's being sent off to a camp for the summer and Along the way she stumbles across this mug at a market and the mug has her name on it. Her, her full name is Jonquil. She discovers that this mug was made in Hooper's Bend at, an art, at the art gallery in Hooper's Bend and so she decides on a whim to get off the train at Hooper's Bend and try and find who made this mug because she never finds anything with her name on it. She quickly stumbles across the shop at Hooper's Bend and the prickly woman who owns the shop but has not been there for very very long and also this very cute little dog called Pirate and it is their journey of how they find peace with one another and how they find their own place and it's a beautiful story it really really is I absolutely loved it. Then I read Gloria O'Brien's History of the Future by A.S. King so I think this is the last A.S. King book I had on my TBR shelf unless I bought another one but I don't think I did. This was a really weird magical realism book. This was published originally in 2014 by Little Brown and I gave it four out of five stars. It is the story of Glory O'Brien who is a very unusual girl. She is very disconnected from her father and from her life. She's just finishing high school. She has been the photographer for the yearbook. She loves taking photos 
a trait that she inherited from her mother who committed suicide when she was very very young but she's found that that has sort of overshadowed her whole life and she doesn't understand why her mother did what she did and people don't talk to her about it. One night she gains the ability to see the past and the future of everyone around her and that's the magical realism element kicking in and what she sees in the future really terrifies her. It is the next civil war uh, for America and it has to do with women's rights and it's honestly quite terrifying what she sees. She makes the effort to record down everything that she sees in, the, in her history of the future so that she can document what might be about to happen. This is a feeling about dealing with loss and about understanding your place in the world and your place in the future and it was just gorgeous. There is a tiny little bit of romance in this and it's gorgeous. In fact it's one of those times where I almost wish there'd been just a little bit more but that wasn't what the story was about and the way that it was handled was really really lovely. Glory isn't always the easiest character to get along with. She's quite prickly but it was still really fascinating. I just I enjoyed it. I do really like A.S. King's writing. I read Winter Song by S.J. Jones. This was published last year I believe. I think it was early last year in 2017 by Titan Books and I gave it I think I gave it four out of five stars. I believe it is a labyrinth slash the Goblin King retelling. I'm not familiar with either of those so I can't compare it to it and I won't which I think was a really good spot for me to come in because I know some people have really liked it and some people have been disappointed by it but I quite enjoyed it and I really liked the atmosphere that came out in this book. I loved the music elements woven through it. It was really really beautiful. There were times when it was a little bit slow and that's probably the only thing I can say the pacing was off a bit and it's quite a chunky book to have pacing issues but it was just gorgeous and there was some absolutely wonderful character and relationship developments that happened in this. So this is the story of Liesl who has heard about the tales of the Goblin King all her life. She she exists in a time where she sort of still half believes those myths and also doesn't know whether to believe them at all and at 18 sort of those those childhood whims and dreams that she had they begin to slip away but her sister is then taken by the Goblin King and she finds herself playing a game with him to try and free her sister and her and herself. She finds her way into the underground where the Goblin King lives and is drawn into sort of this web of intrigue and mythology and while she's there she has to face an impossible decision and this decision impacts both on her and on her family. This was just gorgeous. I love the interactions between Liesl and the Goblin King. So yes, I really enjoyed it. I do recommend it. Then I read Save the Date by Morgan Matson. This is the first Morgan Matson book that I've ever read and I received it from Simon & Schuster in exchange for an honest review because I'm part of their blog tour at the start of July. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. This is a 2018 release from Simon & Schuster and I gave it four out of five stars. This is a contemporary read. It's very summery because I know it's been released in the US over summer and it tells the story of the Grand family from the perspective of the youngest child, Charlie. Charlie is one of five children and she is 17 and all of her older siblings, I think her older sibling is 29 and her sister is getting married and her sister wants to get married at the family home. So the family are gathered there on that weekend to celebrate and prepare for this wedding and everything that could possibly go wrong at this wedding does go wrong. Meanwhile Charlie is trying to deal with a crush on one of her older brother's friends. She is trying to play the dutiful daughter. She's trying to keep her family together because there has been some friction between different members of the family. She also befriends one of the wedding planners who is helping with her sister's wedding. Charlie learns quite a bit about her family over the course of the weekend. Not all of it good and it really sort of helps her decide what she is going to do with her future which she's sort of been putting off because she just wanted to see her family all in one space together again when they haven't been together for such a long time. Another really cool element that's woven through this is that Charlie's mother is a um, comic strip artist in a local newspaper and she gained fame from writing a comic strip about the Grant family which are fictional representations of her actual family and so throughout the book you get these really wonderful little comic strips of the family which is really cool so I really love that element. And the final book that I read this week is Tiger's Raw by Alex Rance. This was a review copy sent to me from Alan and Unwin so thank you very much to them. This is a 2018 release from Alan and Unwin and I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alex Rance is a footballer for one of the Melbourne football teams Richmond. Richmond won the AFL Premiership last year and they haven't won a premiership in a very long time so it was a really big deal. This book celebrates 
teamwork, finding your own strengths and knowing when to rely on your friends to help you. So while it's probably not a poignant picture book, it is definitely one that kids would really love. The illustrations in this are gorgeous. So well done Shane McGee because I love this style of illustration. It's just bright and colorful and aesthetically pleasing. It follows Tiger who is the king of the jungle and yet one day he finds himself falling from the top of the highest tree and he can't get back up and he has to rely on his friends to help him except they try to give him their strengths and he finds that even though those strengths are really great for those particular animals they're not necessarily great for him. So it takes a little bit of time before he comes to that realization and then they're able to work together as a team to help him reclaim his spot on the top of the tree. It's not a complicated story, it's a beautiful little story, kids would definitely love it, bright, colourful, well done. So those are the books that I read this week. I love it when I have picture books to hold up all my books because they just balance so easily. If you got to the end of this video thank you for putting up with me with my cold voice and my rambling. I hope that you got some good recommendations from here. If you're, gonna, if you're planning on picking up any of these books or you have read them before let me know your thoughts down below, I would love to hear them. And also let me know what you are currently reading. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.